What's up, everyone? My name is Edson Cardona, and I want to welcome you guys to the Hashtag Let's Kick the Series. On these episodes, we get the pleasure to be joined by professional athletes, get a little insight on their background and how they made it this far in their athletic careers. A conversation between athletes about their journeys, leading them to success. I hope you guys enjoy. What's up, everyone? Hope you are keeping safe with the COVID-19 pandemic, and my hope is that we are all doing our part and standing in solidarity with the racial justice movement and against police brutality because Black Lives Matter. My name is Edson Cardona, and I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Hashtag Let's Kick It series. On this episode, I get the pleasure to be joined by one of my good friends, classmate, um, Mitchell White. Mitch went to Bellarmine, grew up in San Jose, Bellarmine College Prep, private high school in San Jose, California. Ended up going to Santa Clara University, played baseball with them until he was drafted by the LA Dodgers in 2016. He's also played in the minors, played in Michigan, Rancho Cucamonga, and Oklahoma. Now he's playing in LA as part of the 40-man roster, getting ready for the season, which starts on July 23rd. So. Without further ado, I would like to introduce my good friend, Mitch. And as soon as he can, he's going to come in and join us. So, um, welcome. Yeah, man. There you go. I can see you now. You got me? All right, good. I can't see you at all. I don't... Um, is that but better? Yeah. yeah, I can see you. How's everything going? How's LA treating you? It's been great. I mean, we just kind of got locked down. I mean, you probably know California got shut down a little more, but it's been nice. I've been hanging out in the hotel down in downtown LA. Um, been hanging out, just going to the field and coming back and rinse and repeat. Yeah, man, I hear that, man. Congratulations. I haven't seen you in a while, but I want to yeah. congratulate you on the game on that 40-man roster, man. It's a, big, it's a big thing. I mean, since 2016, when you got signed from Santa Clara, I mean, it's been a huge deal. Coming from Bellarmine, like all of that, one of my good friends from there, and it's good to see that you're in the big leagues now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I appreciate it, man. That's cool. Yeah, thank you for joining us as well, and we'll get started. So, when did your journey begin as an athlete? Uh, I mean, playing baseball. I've been playing since I was in, you know, t-ball when I was like a five, six-year-old. Um, back then, I didn't really like it. I like, I didn't love baseball. <laughs> it took me a while to get there, and then. Kind of kept playing, kept playing, kept playing, all the travel ball stuff. I mean, I'm sure you know with soccer how that goes. Oh, Just playing all over the, all over California, going out to Arizona for tournaments and stuff. Um, and then at Bell in high school is when things started getting a little more serious. And I started realizing, ah, maybe I could play at the next level. Um, and the way it works for recruiting with, with baseball is you get all these showcases uh, you get seen at these tournaments and stuff and just kind of word spreads. Um, so I got offered by Santa Clara and I love that. I mean, I wanted to stay somewhat close to home for me. That's like 20 minutes away. So I stayed real close. Um, and then I was able to just kind of keep going from there. I, I mean, I had a little bit of a setback freshman year getting surgery. I had Tommy John surgery. I don't know if you can see, but Elbow yeah. surgery. Put the, um, if you put the camera a little bit down, we'll be able to see it. I can't even see where I'm at. I don't even know. Okay. All right. Is that better right there? Okay. All right. I'll hold it right there. Um, so, yeah, I got the elbow surgery then. Had to go through all that rehab. And then junior year, 2016, I got drafted by the Dodgers. And I've been here ever since, kind of working my way up. That's awesome to hear, man. Congratulations again. And yeah. That's I mean, an amazing story, right? Going from doing all that hard work. I mean, how was that at the time before getting that um, scholarship to go to Santa Clara and getting that offer? How was it for you and how hard was that transition from 
playing club ball and doing all that type of stuff and then getting that offer finally from Santa Clara. I mean, it was awesome. I didn't really I didn't really appreciate it at the time. Like it took me a while to realize what was going on. Um but I mean, like at the time it was never really my goal to play college baseball. Yeah. It was always kind of secondary. And then it kind of started hitting me when I got these offers. Um, and that's when it really started like, all right, well, I can do this. And then I realized, all right, I need to work harder, though. And so yeah. that's when it became like a full time, all year round kind of thing with travel ball, club ball. Um, and I started doing that. And I kind of learned. I learned how to work and learned how to work out and lift and get stronger and all that. And just kind of slowly over the years, I was able to keep keep climbing um, to where I am now. No, for sure. And I mean, that transition from going from Bellarmine, I mean, and playing in all those leagues throughout, I mean, as such a, at a teenager and then going into Santa Clara, how was that mm -hmm. now going and playing with, I mean, seniors, juniors now at a higher level? I mean, collegiate level is totally different, you know. And so how was that for you? Yeah, I mean, it, it's weird coming in. Like in high school, you're the senior, you, you're the guy who's going on to the next level, whatever. And then you come into a group of guys who are, you know, all older, 21, 22, like grown men kind of, or feels like it coming in as an 18-year-old. And my first season, I didn't play at all either. So it was kind of tough. I didn't really like participate in the team. So I didn't really feel part of it until I actually started playing the next year. Um, and I mean, it's even more so at pro ball. Like once I got into double A, the double A level, you're starting to play with like 30-year-old guys who have two kids. Um, <laughs> a lot of people are married. They have their lives together, and I just feel like the little kid coming in, and I have no idea what's going on. I'm just coming out and throwing, and, and it was awesome, but you kind of learn. It's the same. It kind of just every level you go, whether it's college, whether it's pro, whether it's high school, you always have to move up like that, and there's always going to be someone above you. It's weird. Yeah, seeing that transition for you, right, going from Santa Clara and now also getting those offers to play, like, MLB and play in the little leagues. I mean, the AAA, all those different, like, league. how was that for you? I mean, I know you said that it wasn't something that you wanted to do until you got those offers to go to Santa Clara. But then once you got those offers, like, and saw, all right, this can be something I can turn into, like, a professional career. Yeah. How was that for you? Because now you can see, all right, I can make it to the big leagues, and then there's a big transition for me to go there. And how did you know, okay, now it's time to really, like, focus on this? Yeah, I mean, I think it was probably my sophomore year. So I redshirted my freshman year. I talked about the surgery. Um, and then I came out my sophomore year and had a pretty good year as a closer. So I was, like, the the reliever out of the pen finishing the games. And um, doing that was kind of where I realized, all right, maybe I, maybe I could do this. And then the next year. There we, there we go. There it is. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, I was just saying, like, it was my junior year when I started uh, or I became a starter. And that's when scouts come to you and they say, hey, can you fill out this questionnaire? Let me know about yourself. Um, let me get the let me get the details. And then they're also watching you and they're saying, hey, good job, blah, blah, blah. We like you. And then the whole draft process starts. And that's when I realized, all right, you know, this is the next step for me. This is where I want to go. Um and it kind of it happened really fast. Like it, they give you kind of an idea of where they see you in terms yeah. of the rounds. Um, and at the start of the year, I was like, "Oh yeah, you, you're like a fringe guy. Like we could we could see you coming with us and playing with us." And then middle of the season, it was like, "Hey, maybe we can uh, maybe we can get a little bit more going on with you. Maybe like top ten rounds, top five yeah. rounds." And then by the end, it was like, "All right, let's we're gonna take you. We're gonna take you pretty high." And it ended up working out pretty cool. But um, it's a it's a crazy that was a whole crazy experience because it just kind of kept going and to the next level and the next level and the next level and I had no idea what to expect. Um, and it's like as a twenty one year old kid, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Because <laughs> then you get into you get into pro ball and they send you to our Arizona spring training facility is called Camelback Ranch down in Glendale in Arizona, and you come down there with like forty other kids from the draft class. And everyone's just thrown in a locker room together. Plus, there's a bunch of younger guys already there. Nobody really knows how they fit in, and you just kind of go and do it. And the only way to really, like, prove yourself is to pitch and to play. Um, so I just did that and kind of 
I don't even like I can't even think about I can't remember those times. I don't really know what was going on <laughs> in my head at the time. I was just kind of doing it. Um, and it took me a while to really figure that out and figure out what I was trying to do and slowly just kind of work my way up. So I mean, that's awesome, man. It's good to hear. And I'm glad I'm glad to see that you're doing big things now. And so how was that whole experience after getting drafted? I mean, so many players are going and want to get drafted. I mean, all sports, you know, basketball, baseball, soccer, whatever it is, like every player, every athlete wants to get drafted. So how was that for you? And like, finally seeing like, all right, like getting that call, you know, and yeah. that moment with your family and everyone's there and you're just like, yeah, like this is it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how was that experience? Like, how was that experience for you? I mean, it was the coolest thing in the world. It was a dream <laughs> come true, you know? Um, I, I remember at the time, like I didn't think I, the, the way it works is like there's three days of the draft. And I think the first day is like the top, I don't know, five rounds, let's say. And I didn't think I was going to go quite that high. Um, so I was just playing video games at the time. It was a Friday night. We were just kind of hanging out, not really doing anything. Um, and I get a call, and it's like, hey, from my agent at the time, who I signed a week earlier, and we talked about it, like, what's going to happen? Where are you going to end up? And uh, yeah. I got a call from the Dodgers, and I was like, hey, what do you think about going here? And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm good. Let's do that. Um, and then it just kind of snowballed and happened so fast, and all of a sudden I'm, we're looking on, like, MLB Network, whatever, and it's like, Boom, Mitchell White, Santa Clara, going to the Dodgers. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, it was fun. I mean, we went out that night. I, I remember we went to Yard House with, like, my parents and then um, with my parents and my aunt and my uncle and some friends from Santa Clara. And obviously school was still going on, so that was cool. I was able to kind of celebrate with everyone from around um, from around home. But that was a cool experience. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. Like you said, it's a, it's a dream come true, right? Every athlete. Yeah. yeah drafted and even those who don't still want to go play pro and make it into the big league so i mean it's an honor to be ha to have you here on the hashtag list kick it series so i mean what keeps you motivated i mean at the end of the day like you said that transition to being again like that rookie you know going into the league yeah. and saying like you said i'm playing against guys who are like 30 years old they already have fame they've been in the league you know guys who also have already been there who are as young as me but have already made it you know and so now you coming in what were the obstacles for you now being that rookie once again like you were as a mm -hmm. freshman in in college I mean high school prior to that the team that you play like how was that now being at the big leagues the things that motivated you and what kept you like disciplined yeah I mean so the thing is like everyone thinks being drafted is the goal but in reality, I never, like, thought of it that way. It was, like, a stepping stone for the ultimate goal, which is to play in the big leagues and play for a long time. Um, so thinking of it like that, like, oh, this is a nice, like, pat on the back, like, good job, but yeah. the work's not over. Like, I still – I mean, it's still been four years that I've been in minor league baseball, and I still haven't made it to that level, and that's kind of what the ultimate goal is, obviously. So that is the is the motivation for me to just keep going and, and – um, for me, like we had obviously the COVID situation has been crazy and yeah. we had spring training and then they canceled it in March. Um, so I'd just been hanging around at home, working out, doing whatever I could, uh, with Stevie Berman, actually another Santa Clara guy, my catcher. Um, I've been working out with him. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I've been working out with him and it was the first time I'd thrown, like some live BP. So basically against a bunch of college guys that I knew and we we're throwing at like a JV tiny little field, crappy mound. Sometimes like, I didn't even have a catcher. It was weird. But then I get here and now I'm playing at Dodger stadium. I'm playing against all these guys who are, you know, for like they've been big leaguers for the past five, 10, 15 years. Um, just huge names. And the Dodgers lineup is ridiculous. And it's like, wow, this is pretty crazy. And it's like that feeling it's so hard to describe. It's just like, just, you, I don't know. It's just like an adrenaline kick and it's just the, it's the best. And you forget until you feel it. And it'd been so long for me. It'd been over a year since I'd felt that. And it was just, it's the coolest feeling ever to be on the mound, all eyes on you, ready to go and just attack. No, I mean, like you said, that motivation, that, that drive that you have on still, like you said, the, the job's not over, you know. Mm -hmm. You still got yeah. a lot of work to go. Like you said, four years went by and still 
that goal that you have and set is still there, you know? And so after all so far, everything that you've been through, I mean, going through college, playing, getting drafted, and these four past years that you've had, I mean, who can you credit your success to? That's a good question. I mean, there's a lot of people for sure. Um, definitely my parents. I mean, it's crazy how much stuff they did for me, especially like growing up in California in the Bay Area. We'd have all these tournaments out in Central California. So it's like Fresno, Turlock, Modesto. They'd be driving me out every weekend in the summer to go to play wherever, some random team. And <laughs> they were there from the start. And they still are. I mean, my mom still texts me every day before I have a start or every day of a start to say like, oh, go get them. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and they're my biggest supporters for sure. And I love them for that. Um, and then in terms of like coaches, it's, it's pretty funny. My pitching coach in uh, college at Santa Clara was this uh, Gabe Rebus, who has known me since I was 17, probably when he recruited me, he was the guy who was like, Hey, you can, he offered me a scholarship to Santa Clara and all that. And now he followed me to the Dodgers um, and now he's the pitching coordinator with us. So I'm still working with him to this day. Yeah. Um, and uh, like, this, he's taught me so much. He taught me all about pitching, all about everything. Um, so he's been big. Um, there's, I mean, it's crazy in pro ball. One of the biggest things is like the amount of coaches and resources you have available to you. It's almost more about learning to shut some of that out. Like there's too much going on and you got to figure out, you got to pick and choose what works for you. Um, I'm sure you know how that goes too. It's like people are always going to be in your ear for, and everyone's trying to help, but sometimes it becomes, uh, there's an information overload um, and it becomes too much. So you need to learn how to kind of shut some stuff out and be like, all right, this is my guy. This is, I'm listening to this. This works for me. This has worked for me in the past and just kind of take that and run with it. Um, but yeah, I'd say those two are one of the biggest uh, people or coaches or whatever motivating forces for me oh yeah shout out to everyone that you just mentioned because i mean they were a big part of your journey so far and now as you embark into a new journey and playing now in the having to be in the 40 player roster it's like even bigger dream come true you know like you said playing now versus these guys who have been in the league for so long and like you said that adrenaline now kicks in and you're like it's a surreal moment you know being on the mound and now pitching like you were yesterday, right? You guys had a, you guys had a yeah, we had an inner squad, yeah. There you go. And so, like, tell me about that. How was? I mean, you spoke a little bit about it that generally kicking in, but still, you know, you don't you don't really feel it till you're there. Yeah, I mean, for me, for me, it's always like the day before. For me, sitting in the hotel room the day before, two days ago, you kind of feel the nerves, like the anxiety, and it's like oh we got to, I got to do this tomorrow. It's like, Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Blah, blah, blah. Everything's racing through your head. Usually for me, I wake up in the morning, try to just ignore that, push that aside. And then once you start, once I start doing like my prep, so like just getting my body ready, activating everything, getting a stretch in, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of when I'm like, all right, I can do this. This is good. I'm ready. And as that progression goes up until the moment where I'm pitching, all that anxiety is pushed away and it's more like, let's go. I'm ready to rock. Let's ride. Um, and that is the cool, that's the coolest feeling. Cause it's like, you still have that anticipation and you're still ready to go, but it's not like a negative thing. It's like what keeps you going. It's, it's the reason, like that's the whole adrenaline thing. The reason I do it, you know? Um, so for me yesterday specifically, it didn't really go, it was the greatest outing. But it was still good. It was still important for me. Um, and I just made some adjustments or have to make some adjustments these coming next few days and kind of go from there. No, of course. I mean, now being there is like something you dreamt about playing against all these players. And like you said, making those adjustments now to become that player that you want to be. Yeah. You know? And so you spoke a little bit about your injuries. And so I wanted to talk a little bit. And and that see your perspective on how was that? I mean, being injured and that for an athlete, I mean, you know how it is. It's yeah. not at all having to go through therapy, physical therapy and all mm -hmm. this stuff. How was that for you and your mental as well? Because that mentality, I mean, has to be strong because some players either come out out of injuries and don't end up playing, don't have that passion anymore. Or, I mean, it's a grind. 
and they either get hurt again. And so how was that for you? Um, yeah. Being in, coming back? Yeah, I mean, the, my first taste of it was coming in to Santa Clara after my freshman year and back in 2013 uh, with Tommy John. So that's a whole year of nothing but physical therapy, just like you talked about. And that'll drive you crazy real quick. Um, I was lucky. I think I was lucky to have it in college where there was a little more going on. Like I could kind of <laughs> tune some of it out, like take care of business and then just yeah. have some fun. Um, but it was a tough year for me. Like in terms of baseball, I felt, I felt like I didn't fit in. I was just kind of like, it was just a waste. Um, I felt like a waste of space. I didn't really do anything. I didn't contribute to the team. But um, then once I got through that, it was like, all right, now I'm good. Now I'm ready to go. And it's the same thing as now when I'm like, oh, it's been a year since I've actually pitched. You get all that built up like energy and you're just ready to go. Um, so that was a great feeling to come back from that. Um, and then more recently, like in 17, I broke my toe, which was like the most frustrating, terrible injury you could have. Because it's not like a it's not like a career threatening thing or it's not like it's going to really ex uh, change your performance. But I had to sit out for probably four to six weeks I think and basically just doing nothing um so that was the one where it was really frustrating I was stuck in Arizona in a hotel room going to the field every day didn't have a car it was just kind of you know you're stuck in a bubble um so that was just that's the one where the mental side kicks in and, and it, I was lucky to have a good group of guys like my roommate Kyle Garlic is he's with the Phillies now killing it doing really well but, like, I was able to – I kind of got a lot closer with him and then the other group of guys that were uh, going in every day with me. Um, and that's what kind of gets you through is the people around you, yeah. um, but whether it's players, whether it's coaches, whether it's the training staff. Um, just kind of being excited to be around those people makes it makes it easier, even though you're not able to play and do that, what you want to do. Um, and then in that, later that year, I herniated a disc in my back which didn't happen or which didn't really matter until spring training when I had to be stuck there for another four weeks in Arizona doing the same thing. And that was another tough one because I didn't really have a whole buildup and a full off season to kind of get ready. Um, so that kind of pulled me back in terms of the season. And I got basically a late start by like two months or something like that. That was another time though, where I was able to, like I had a good group of guys. Um, There's like four of us that were just really close and we were playing, we were playing Fortnite all the time like for hours it was crazy and then we go to the, we go to the pool sorry we'd start out we go to the facility for like three four hours get our work done come back get get to the pool and just hang out there and then uh we'd play video games till late in the night and that was like it was weird but it was cool we just had our little bubble and we were able to take care of business but then once you finally get back and you're healthy again that's when it's like all right this is worth it all that work i just put in that made it cool um, so yeah, I mean, I've definitely had a lot of experience with injuries, unfortunately, but I've also had a lot of, uh, there are a lot of good experiences in those, um, for whatever negatives, there's always some sort of positive to take from it. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, a lot of players do get injured and their mental side, you know, breaks down and it breaks them. And so for you, I mean, luckily you had those people around you that did bring you up. And at the end of the day, you were. I mean, like you said, having those positive people around. And that wasn't something that brought you down. And you're the player that you are now, you know, having that strong, strong mentality. And being in the 40, I mean, man roster, I keep saying, is not the easiest thing to do. So I congratulate you again. And, I mean, seeing you there and seeing all that hard work, I mean, has paid off. And like I said to many players, professional players, I mean, we look up to you as well. I mean, I do. You're somebody who... I mean, who has gone through so much and all that, I mean, can break down a player. And I've seen it, you know. And so seeing where you are now, it's it's special, you know, and you're blessed as well to be at that such a high level. And it's it's amazing to see going through all that and becoming the player that you are now. It's just, it's amazing, you know. Yeah, I've been lucky. I appreciate it. It's been, it's been cool. Yeah, so what advice would you give to your younger self if you could, I mean, a lot of kids are going to be watching this and want to see like the, how it is to be a professional and to make it to, I mean, the highest level. And so what advice would you give to your younger self, if you could, about the journey you've taken? Just stay healthy. That would have been, that would have been nice. 
Um, but I mean, a lot of the stuff I learned in terms of taking care of my body, I couldn't have learned unless I'd gotten hurt. So it's kind of weird. Like I would have never taken all the stuff I do seriously unless I'd have those, had those setbacks like I did. Yeah. Um, but that's always tough. I mean, it's hard to force someone to do that unless they've really gone through it. Um, so there's that. And then I guess uh, for me, I don't know advice for my younger self I guess it'd be also just to have fun with it I mean that seems so cliche but I guess it's just really true because I've seen so many guys get burnt out from there's a lot of um, there's a lot of politics in baseball for example in minor league baseball like certain guys get promoted for good reasons and bad reasons whether they're playing well or not Um, and if you can't get through that and just be a professional about it and understand what your role is in these situations, then you're going to get hurt and you're not going to, you're not going to have fun and, and you're yeah. going to be, you're going to be screwed. And I, that's not to say it's always fun. Like sometimes it sucks. Um, but if you keep in mind what you're trying to go for and you're trying to, and you're doing your best um, to get through it, then I mean, you'll be good. That's, that's the biggest thing for me. I think just keeping that at even keel, like focus on, happiness don't focus on the end goal because sometimes that just the success doesn't come no yeah at the end of the day you have to have fun in what you're doing you know i mean have fun every day you go into the office and when you get out you know enjoy the moment and so um what experience can you say like that one game that you played in or like you know against big players like you can say like you remember it like yesterday like oh man like I had a shutout, like no one touched any of the pitches that I was throwing, you know, like what game can you say was it for you, which was like that one game you can say, all right, that's the one, like. Um, I'd say, I'd say there's two that come to mind. One, it was like in college against UW, Washington, uh, we were up in Seattle and I think, I don't remember my stat line, but I went pretty deep in the game, like eight innings. Uh, gave up maybe like one run and a bunch of strikeouts and whatever. And it wasn't until I'd gotten drafted, probably a year later, one of the big scouts with the Dodgers said, hey, I saw you at Washington. And it was like, that was the game where I knew. And I was like, that was the one where I was like, this guy, we want this guy. And that was a pretty cool, that was a pretty cool revelation later, hearing that from him and being like, oh yeah, that that was pretty good. That was pretty fun. Um, so there's that one. And then there's one, I still look back to a lot in um, in uh, pro ball from when I was in Rancho Cucamonga. I think we were playing like Visalia or something like that, like in the middle of nowhere, California. And I threw, I didn't throw a complete game. It was like eight plus innings. And that was my best start probably in terms of numbers in pro ball. And then everything was working that day. It was just a great feeling. And I don't know. It's hard to explain as a pitcher. Like there's days where everything is working and, it's the easiest thing ever. And then there's days where you feel like nothing's working and you're just throwing, throwing everything you got at these guys and they're smoking everything. And those days where you have it all, I mean, they're just beautiful. You just cruise. It just feels so easy. and They're few and far between, but the ones you do get, you remember and you kind of, I don't know, you cherish. That's kind of what you're always going for. No. Yeah, for sure. Those moments are what we, what we play for, you know? And, um, I appreciate you. I mean, I appreciate the time you took out of your day, and I wish nothing but the best, man. I'm glad again that you made this 40-man roster for the season that's going to start. You said July 23rd, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I appreciate you, man. I hope nothing but the best, and hopefully get to see you soon and go to one of the games and see you play, get that jersey, and get it signed, you know? Yeah, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, no problem. Thank you again for being part of the Hashtag Let's Kick It Series, man. Yep. Take care, Ed. Later. Right, Thank you again for everyone who uh, joined in. I appreciate it. Next week, we will have another athlete come in and tell us about their story. Thank you again, Mitch. Appreciate you. Congratulations on making that roster and for everything that's going to be happening in your journey. I mean, wish nothing but the best. I'll see you guys next week.